So this is the easiest point to remember. So there's three points under this. Your possessions don't help you. Possessions and position, I would say. Think about it. You know, some people think, oh, if I had more money, if you had more money, you could be probably in more comfortable surroundings, but it doesn't have anything to say with your, about your mind. And I've seen some really wealthy people die in horrible agony and torment, you know, because they were hanging on to their belongings. You know, tell him about the mortgage, tell him I left the beneficiary for the, you know, this is what they're thinking about when they're dying. Mind not peaceful at all. Every creature comfort they have. You know, every comfortable thing they could have. So the second point is family and friends. Do they help you? Good. So this is one like this, family and friends. Okay. What family and friends can do for you is lend support in how you would like to die, where you want to die, what you want your memorial service to be. You know, I've worked with people on this. That's helpful. That's supportive. We, we've had, for Buddhist people, we have people that will come around their bed, a group of people or one person, and do their practices with them. You know, I've done that with many people. So my friend who died of cancer, she couldn't, wasn't strong enough to do her practice. I would come over every afternoon and I would just sit on the floor. She'd lay on a sofa and I would do this practice and she would listen. You know, she really liked that. She found that really comforting. But the actual death experience is yours alone. Yeah, I'm afraid you can't take anybody with you when you go through the experience. And what happens with some family members and friends is they're not doing the things you want them to do. Right? So they're over you crying. Some people are saying, please don't die. Please don't leave me. You know? I mean, we had this, you know, there, there is humor in death situations. And my mother, um, you know, she is still quite with us in a way. But my father the other day said to me, you know, can you ask her where the safety deposit key is? You know, she's the one who put it away. There, there are things like that, that you hear these comical notes, which sometimes helps a little bit when, you know, people are really emotionally drained taking care of somebody who's sick, like that. So family and friends, it's, it's really nice to get, we'll talk about this on the third session, how do I get my paperwork together so it's easier for them? That's a very valuable topic of, of discussion. But think about family and friends. Make sure they know what you want. Do you know what they want? Because you could be saying the wrong thing, you could be doing the wrong thing, they could be in the wrong place where they don't want to die, and they don't want to be in the hospital, they don't want to be at home, things like that. Make it as peaceful for them as possible. Don't have the difficult discussions with siblings or other family members in the room with them if you think they're in a coma because they can hear you. Hearing is the last thing to go. So don't think it's, you know, and I, I've, I've watched my, my great aunt die. Her sons who never got along were in the hospital room with us. And she was really in a coma, but they started talking about the deed and the belongings, and I noticed her breathing change. She got really agitated. And then I went over to them and I said, you walk outside the room, and then they did, and then she calmed. I noticed her breathing calmed down. I, I don't know if she heard, but it seemed like a change when she heard agitated conversation that agitated her. The last point under the only thing that benefits you is your spiritual practice is that um, your, your possessions don't help, your family and friends don't help, your body doesn't help you. Your body's your body's the thing that is the mess right now. It's why it's not sustaining the life, usually. The body's finishing for some reason. So from that third point, you develop a resolution that not only will I, will I start practicing, but I will start now. And I will actually, as much as I can, try to cultivate a meaningful spiritual life so that my mind won't have any regrets when I die. So let's take a break, and then we'll come back and have questions, okay? Let's take 10 or 15 minutes. Help yourself to 